So hello, a very warm welcome from my side, my dear friends. I'm an accounting professor from the University of Economics and Business in Vienna, and I started speaking very openly about deficits and the problems in our monetary systems in October 2008, just after the crash of Lehman Brothers. Uh, it was a public discussion. On my side was the former Chancellor Franz Wranitzki, and he was really shocked. Um, most people don't understand the problems that we are facing. And perhaps you know Venus Project, you know uh, the Free World Charter Organization, you know perhaps the books and the stories of Gene Roddenberry, Star Trek, where we live in a world without money. I can tell you it is possible. But the problem we are facing is how can we get there? And all that we have to know is it happens in our minds. We have to push the right switches, and then we will find the path. I will give you some hints and clues how to do it on yourself. First of all, what's wrong with our money? Um, most people uh, seem uh, to believe, OK, uh, we have a, f a financial crash down. Just let's uh, cut on public spending, pay back some debts, and return to business as usual. This is not possible. Why? Because money is not a positive value. Money is invented by the banks. If you go to a bank and you get a loan, they don't give you money um, that, l that lay l lays around in the vaults of the bank. Uh, the bank that gives a loan doesn't have the money. Loans from banks, this is money that doesn't exist. It is created. It is created by lending it out, bearing interest. And this is one of our major problems today, because when banks grant a loan, the money doesn't exist beforehand. It's not existing. It's invented out of thin air. But then, in fact, the banks want it back with interest, and this is the problem, because they never invent the money for interest. In the beginning, in older times, some thousand years ago, people used cattle or sheep as money, and then if they lent uh, a herd, they returned it with the newly born calves, and this is what we call natural interest. Natural interest grows on itself, and then we can return it. No problem with that. But if we use gold coins or paper money, hmm, they, they don't get children. So banks only create the money of the loan and never the money to pay interest. And this is where the problems start, because the money for the interest doesn't exist in our money volume. So this is the root of the so-called competition in a real economy. We have to fight against each other, to take away money from each other, to give it back, back, <laughs> to give it to banks as interest. Yeah? Back is the wrong word. <laughs> So, you know and you understand that our money that we use today doesn't have any value in itself. It is completely worthless. Uh, it is funny paper, uh, numbers, bits and bytes in the computers, but still we treat it, we treat it as if it were gold coins. And this is the next problem that we face. Because banks demand a collateral from their customers. They, on, the, on themselves, they have nothing of value. They offer you bits and bytes and paper sheets. But then they take away your house, your car, your property, if you don't give them back the money with interest, where the money for the interest has never been invented. Now, if we can't repay the capital, we lose the collateral, and this is what we call expropriation. You know it from the foreclosure uh, problem in the United States today. Our worthless money is, in fact, a circular argument. Let's have a look at a pound bill. It's very, very funny what you can read there. The Bank of England writes, I promise to pay on a 10-pound note, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of 10 pounds. Okay, you give 10 pounds and you receive 10 pounds. It's a circular argument. 
Now, if three people in our current system want good life and they lack money, they can do it. It's even legal. How to do it? There must be customers by different banks. And then one of them starts the game presenting a bill of 100, Mr. B to Mr. A. Mr. A doesn't have the money. He gets a loan from the bank. Why should the bank grant the loan? Oh, he has a collateral. He has a claim. The bill to Mr. C. Mr. C doesn't have the money either. He gets the next loan from a different bank, but again, he has a collateral. The claim in, uh, of, of 300, it's a bill to Mr. B. Mr. B, again, doesn't have the money. He gets it from the bank as a loan. And now the game goes into the next round with a bill of 400. This is our growth, our economic growth, in the root of this circle. We have permanently to repay the banks money that is created as a credit with interest and then again some money more that we can live from. And this money that we can live from has to grow exponentially because the interest beneath it grows exponentially. And this is uh, in fact the root of our problem in the current system. How can we fix it now? It has to do with mental models. Money isn't something uh, that comes from natural science. It is a social invention. It's a social contract, a construction. And if we all people around the globe agree, then we can change it. But we must be a really large number. Uh, it's very hard to change the money system if you're a group of three or four persons. What's very important now is we have to say democracy starts with a democratic money system because what is happening just now is that most of our Im most important laws are already broken by politicians just because they are afraid. They are afraid, scared to death. Only a, a very, very minority of politicians understands those problems and they don't dare to speak about it. They are shocked. And now they are breaking all laws and all rules just to keep the illusion of a functioning money system alive. But now democracy is endangered, as we see in Greece, and within a few weeks in different other countries. And therefore, we must change it. We must take away the money to the, the, the power to create money from private banks, and we must it do in the population. Democracy must create money. Now, what is a sound new definition for money? Money is a rule, a rule to distribute goods and services among people. Now, each economy has two different problems, production and distribution. Now, a problem is that we have linked those two different problems with the money system. If I work in the production process, I earn money. And this is the only money that I can spend in the distribution process. But if my, my enterprise breaks down, I lose my job. And then I can't buy things from other companies, and they get into problems too. And this is what we call a production cycle, uh, a, a, a vicious cycle that endangers our economy. We must not mix those two different problems. Production is something that we can do in a cooperative way, in a sustainable way, in an ecological way. And the distributions of goods and services is a totally different problem. This is something that democracy has to decide. It's a political uh, problem where the minds of people can grow different f f kinds of giving, um, of presenting things, of giving and taking or giving alone. That it's something that we have to experience with our feelings and not always with, uh, with our uh, mathematics. Now, usually we are caught in dual transactions, in binary transactions. If I want something from another person, 
this person can insist that I deliver immediately something of equal value. Today, in most cases, it is money. Uh, if I lack the money in this moment, then most probably the transaction cannot be done. Uh, but what do we have today? We have social networks. This is our cloud of possibilities, of combinatorial possibilities, our social networks. And now if we connect into the cloud, then we can break free of our binary transactions. So now if I am in need of something that another person has, the other person can give it to me, gets in the cloud uh, a positive value on its account, I myself go into debt, and later on I repay with my own goods and services. And this is something that can very easily be done today on the internet with our databases that are already available. And then there's the next new definition for money, a very important one. If you consider it, you will know what I mean. What is money today? If I want something from society, I have to spend money, and if I do something for society, I receive money. So we can say that money is nothing else than a user interface. Money is an interface. It's the interface between the individual and society. But an interface is software. It's not hardware. It's software. It's not hard physical coins of gold. It's software. And software is flexible. Software can grow. Software can have different behavior. Today, we, um, we write software using objects, object-oriented technology. And those software objects have behavior. Those objects can learn. They can change their behavior. We can create different monetary systems for each single person that fits into the personal life and into the phase of development. So what will we do in the next step? User interfaces today on your laptops and your computers, <laughs> you can adjust them. Uh, you can choose on Linux if you use KDE or GNOME, and you can change the color of your windows if you use Windows. And this is how we will treat money in the future. Everything that is really from real economy, hard facts, resources, knowledge, skills, services, goods, stay on the back end in the database where they are really handled, where they are indexed, and then, then comes the money system. And the money system is only the front end. It's only the front end where I can adjust it so that it fits into the personal life of every individual. So money is the front end and not the back end. This is something that we have mixed. And this is an error, uh, a mistake that very, very often happens in software development. We implement something on the back end side yeah, that in fact is better placed on the front end. With money it's the same, because money is only the bridge to come to goods and services on the back end. And money must fit to our personal life and phase of development. And now we have the first time in human history the choice to implement individual systems that adapt to personal lives and not the other way around not changing people to, fit, to make them fit to systems, but make systems that fit to people. And this is what we will try in the future. Money is the user interface between an individual and the society. Let's work together, let's change the game for the freedom of choice of our social user interface, and this will be Society 2.0. Welcome in the future.